Hello and welcome to SDN Tech Forum. This is our first video in SDA Bootcamp series. And what we are going to do in this video, we are we will start with DNAC install, right? So once you receive your appliance, you have to perform the rack and stack, configure IP addresses, so that the DNA center is available inside your network, right? And uh, while install, you have to apply certain IP addresses, um, uh, gateway addresses, NTP proxy and all those things and we'll talk about that. But before we actually take a deep dive into how to install pro uh, process, let's look at how a DNA center appliance looks like, right? So DNA center appliance comes in three form factors or three SKUs, DN2, this is the DNA center generation 2 uh, hardware appliance then we have large appliance dash l which stands for large and then we have xl which stands for extra large and as you can see uh, the difference between an hardware appliance then large and xl it the amount of resources it has right so on dn2 hardware apl you can see it's 44 core m5 however in l we have 56 core and xl is um very powerful it has 112 core appliance uh, core M m5 cpus right this is uh illustration of dna center um, this is probably the older appliance if you go for excel it will be a bigger m5 ucs chassis i i'm going to paste the link for this data sheet in the video so that you can go and read and familiarize yourself why reading through this uh, document is important because it talk about the various SKUs, what are the, what kind of software and licensing you, you will require when you start using your DNS center. All right. So this is a very useful document and it has some of the other links as well. Okay. So assuming you have the you have chosen your hardware appliance and it is shipped to your network, um, your, your premise, then you have to be ready to do a rack stack and network install and for that you need second generation appliance uh, installation guide this is release 1.3 this is referring to D cisco dna center software release but mostly they are same so i will say you find out a release note which is uh, latest maybe 2.3 but most of the things stay same as you can see you have to uh, based on which country you are based on that you have to select the power and um, and um, cable and all those things okay what i want to show you is the front and back illustration and then we will move on to actual install so as you can see on front you have a lot of uh, uh, drives so slot all these slots you have a lot of drives here okay front panel leds And on the back side, if it is a Excel appliance, you will see a lot of ports. And we will talk about what are these different ports are. So this is the smaller appliances and this is the large appliance or Excel appliance. All right. You can read through this document and I'm going to paste the video uh, link, document link in the description section. All right. Now let's go to our presentation. So to start with a DNAC install, what do you need? You need your data center or premise people to rack and stack your appliance. Then you have to go to cisco.com and download the prerequisite software. You can search with Cisco DNA center and uh, watch out for the latest and recommended release from um, Cisco website and make sure that that software is supported on your hardware appliance. Prepare bootable USB. So here we are assuming that we are going to install uh, a software predetermined software and for that you down first you download your software from cisco.com and then burn that software to prepare a bootable usb you can use programs like balena itcher uh, a third party software tool use usb 3.0 minimum 64 gb because dna center software itself today is like more than 36 or 40 GB. So it's good to use a large size USB, which is 
at least 64 GB. Once you have your bootable USB uh, prepared, then you can plug it in uh, to DNAC appliance. On the back side, you will find some USB slots, so you can simply plug it on and then power up, uh, power up your DNA center appliance. Once you power up the appliance, it will start the reboot initial boot. During initial boot, what you can do, you can press functions F6 and it will come into boot selection menu. From there, you can choose your USB, what you prepared or in, and inserted earlier. Once USB is selected, it will boot from USB and since it has a boot sector or uh, bootloader available, it will use that software to boot uh, uh, for initial boot. Once initial boot, is done you will be presented with a screen where you can start configuring the ip address ntp uh, which is network time protocol if you are using proxy in your setup then proxy and finally you set up the maglev uh, and admin username and uh, password so username remains same maglev and admin maglev is for ssh or cli or and admin is for ui so you can set up the password during the install these these two password doesn't have to be same so i advise you to keep it different and a strong password after the installation is finished which can take almost depend on uh, what version you are installing it can take more than four to six hour after installation is finished you can browse to the ip address you provided earlier all right IP address planning, DNA center have multiple ports as you have seen in the installation document. So multiple ports serve multiple purposes here, different purposes here. Uh, some of the common connections are out of band management port. So you can use uh, say one gigabit um, copper port for management of DNAC so that you can browse to that IP address and you can perform actions uh, on, on DNAC. And then you have an enterprise or data port, which this port is you will be used to connect to or talk to the different network devices, what you have within your network. So I advise you to pick a 10 giggy port because you are going to uh, see a lot of traffic on this interface. If you are planning to use HA, that means a cluster of three nodes or three hardware appliances then you need to make a connection between them and that's that's what that port is called cluster port so um, prepare for a cluster uh, ip addresses cimc connections since dnac appliances are nothing but a ucs they, they are the uh, soft uh, solutions running on a ucs chassis so you will have a cmc uh, connection to the ucs chassis and obviously console connections all right now what we can do we can actually uh, i'm going to play a video where i'm going to show you the install before we go to install make sure that when you pick your software that this is the software i'm going to install on my dna center please 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 make sure that you download the release notes and read it because once you release the uh, read the release note you will know what are the features coming into this uh, software release what are the bug fixes and also you have this package versions information about that release so for example if we are going to install 222334 i know that these are my different uh, system updates so this is my system version this you can think of this is a base image and on top of that we are deploying multiple packages and all these packages name and their versions are listed here and these things will be, DNAC will be like fetching uh, all these things automatically once it has a cloud connection. Or if you are doing install from USB, it will have most of the uh, packages inside your uh, software package. If a few are missing, they will be available automatic um, after the install. Assuming it's not an air gap installation, that means your DNAC can reach out to Cisco software.cisco.com and um, uh, check the latest software all right so this is our dna center and as you can see my software management is all updated that mean i have all the latest and greatest packages installed here all right now what i'm going to do i'm going to play a video where i was uh, actually performing this install and where necessary i'm going to talk about the step as you can see i've logged in 
using my admin username and password. This is the password I set up during the install. First time when you, after install, first time when you log in, you may be presented with a first time setup screen. And this is a workflow which you can use to quickly onboard your devices and apply some standard setting, or you can simply exit out of that workflow, say uh, perform let, later, and then um, choose to do the task which is important for you. As you can see, in, during your first time install, you will be presented the screen of like all the workflow, and you can see there are multiple workflows are there, and, and within those workflow, you have a grouping of task, uh, which is like, a guided or a wizard kind of scenario. So if you want to discover your devices and you do not know where to start, it's a good idea to come and uh, look at the workflow. Like here in this example, we are creating a new role. Um, and if you don't know where to go and how to start a role, you can simply come and use this wizard kind of configuration. Okay. Also, you can see there is an official DNA Center, Cisco DNA Center YouTube channel, and it's uh, very helpful. It's been updated uh, with respect to software releases. So you can always go and subscribe to that channel. Now on, on the top right, you can see multiple screens. So this is the help. It tells you what is the version you are running, and we are running DNA Center 2334. If you expand the packages, these are the packages installed on top of the base image. You can see notification also and software management. Right now, my software is all up to date, but if there is something available, you can see a notification popping up in the cloud, uh, cloud icon there. I highly advise you to use Chrome uh, for any kind of DNAC um, workflow, upgrade, etc you may see some problem with Firefox. As you can see, my new I have new applications are available to download and these are the few applications. They are they were not part of my bootable USB and they made this DNA center can see these new packages because it has made a connection to the soft, uh, software.cisco.com. Now I can choose to install them. I can choose to um, not install them based on uh, the functionality it has to offer. Right, as you can see, software management currently installed application. These are the application installed. Okay, sometime it just failed to make a like connection and you can see an error, but it is a transient thing. So if it happened, feel free to come back a little later. As you can see, I have a few new packages available like access control application, application policy and etc., which were not part of my USB. So I'm going to choose them and uh, say download. And after that, I'm going to say install. So it is going to reach out to software.cisco.com, fetch all these packages, first download and then install. Obviously, first time when you make the connection, uh, or uh, first time when you perform the install, you have to put up your credentials, cisco.com credentials. You may have, uh, because you are a part of contract, so you have to put the credentials. Here, and now I'm in DNAC CLI, and as you can see, I have two IP address, one IP address for management, one IP address for internet. Internet is my enterprise facing port, and management is uh, out of bound one gig port. With Newer releases, DNAC 2233, uh, two, three. you can see maglev restricted shell, shell is active. That means I can perform only few basic command, not maglev or maxctl command. Um, and if you want to go to unrestricted shell, you need to just type underscore shell and provide a password. So it's, it's a safety um, arrangement. So we don't want to expose DNAC maglev CLI accidentally um, to all of the users. Only user who know the super user password, they can they should be able to bypass the shell and go to unrestrictive shell. 
as you can see i'm issuing command maglev package status and gripping for not so these are the packages available to my dna center but they are not deployed as you can see on ui also i'm getting uh indication that some packages are available uh, but they are not deployed and the same thing we are verifying on the cli itself and i'm showing you from the multiple angles how you can check which packages are available for install and you can see maglev um, package status or uh, um, other things now the same thing we are going to verify via ui and you can see all these applications they are available for install you can select them all and say download and install and all this is happening after i did a usb install that mean all these packages they were not part of usb uh, software initially the, these are only uh, available once i this dnag made a connection secure connection to software.cisco.com based on uh, the cco credentials you provided as you start installing services you may see this orange banner because during install uh, many services get restarted uh, because that is one of the requirement for the install and uh, and you can see that as an indication of, of this orange banner but as the installation complete the services start coming up and the banner will di be disappear all right so i think uh, this is it uh, for dnac install uh, please go ahead if you are a, a system admin and you are starting this journey go ahead perform the install and if you have any questions doubt feel free to uh, ask me in comment section or you can also come to our discord um, room and ask questions thank you i'll see you in the next video